Hello and welcome to Technology Update. It's been a year since our last visit, but this month we return to St. Petersburg to check out some of the Northern Capital's latest tech. So, on this month's show, we have a blast at Company Streamer. The B200 reaches new heights in the record books. And I fall off a massive wheel. The old cliché, reinventing the wheel, is normally used to describe something that's a waste of time. But here at TechUp, we don't necessarily agree. In fact, the wheel has quite literally been reinvented time and time again over the centuries, which has led to some pretty out-of-the-box thinking. Second wind. The 10-foot, 1,000-pound iron dinosphere was once hailed as the high-speed vehicle of the future. Seen here in the UK in 1932, the giant hamster wheel's six horsepower and three gears meant it could trundle along at up to 30 miles an hour. It was the brainchild of British inventor John Purves, who was confident that someday Britain's motorways would be full of people rolling along in dinospheres. Perhaps, in part, thanks to these advantages over the motor car. Gravity itself is our motor power and pulls us along. We can start on ice, we can start on mud or slime, because we are not trusting to pushing the wheel around to get ourselves going. For almost 150 years, mankind has dreamt of being able to travel around in a giant wheel. And in 1869, Richard Hemming patented his hand-powered flying Yankee velocipede. Other early sketches envisage horse-drawn and propeller versions but the first photographic evidence of a motorized monowheel dates back to 1904. With the petrol engine becoming more commonplace, designs and patents for monowheels came thick and fast from the early 1920s to late 30s. But you just have to look out onto the street to see that the idea didn't take off. But that hasn't stopped people from trying, and the dream is far from dead. Meet Igor Kazarienka. Although the St. Petersburg inventor is not related to John Purves, he could be considered his spiritual descendant. Igor's company, Pockets Transport, produces all sorts of weird and wonderful contraptions, ranging from scooters with tracks to propeller backpacks. So the inventor's latest addition to the product range didn't seem out of place. However, unlike Purves, he does acknowledge that there are more practical forms of transport out there. The inner frame, shaped like the old Soviet quality mark, is surrounded by a two meter diameter outer rim. Wheels on each corner run around the inside powered by a three horsepower single cylinder motor. The whole thing weighs 58 kilos, has a top speed of 50 kilometers an hour and a price tag of 1,000 euros. But we wondered what else you could buy for this money. You could get a decent road bike, which also has a top speed of roughly 50 kilometers an hour, depending on wind conditions and fitness levels. Or you could buy a 14 horsepower Chinese made motorbike with a top speed of 110. But if you're really looking to impress a lady, you're probably better off getting two tickets to Paris and renting a scooter. The monocycle was built as a device for understanding a couple of things and out of curiosity. In fact, mainly out of curiosity. As a way of understanding how it's possible to ride such a thing. I must admit, I was pretty curious too. But as you can probably tell from my daft facial expression, things started to go wrong pretty much straight away. Luckily, only my pride was damaged this time. Across the pond, American inventor Kerry McLean caught the monowheel bug back in the 70s. He's been building them ever since, including this one powered by a Buick V8. Unfortunately, the 225 horses proved to be just too much for the device. McLean lived to tell the tale, and I was slightly relieved that even the pros can get it wrong. Sometimes people make things that you don't really need in everyday life. It's like a hobby. You know, some people are into making models or paragliding. These hobbies may look pointless to begin with, but later you find ways of using them in everyday life. In theory, you could use a monocycle to get around the city, but you'd have to be careful. After another crash course, I was ready to give the monowheel another spin. Being effectively a giant gyroscope makes the monowheel inherently very stable, but only once you get it going, and as I'd already found out, that's the hard bit. Then once you've managed to get upright, you're going to have to turn sooner or later, which means slowing down just enough to reduce the gyroscopic effect without setting it off balance. And one more thing, 
If you see things going south, you have to go against your natural instinct to let go of the gas and give it more welly instead. I could definitely see why the monowheel never took off with its lack of brakes and poor turning, but none of that matters, it just makes it all the more fun to ride. Needless to say, two meter wheels aren't generally available in your local bike shop. So Igor had to craft his own using two millimeter thick steel and a vulcanized section of hose pipe for the tubeless tires. As a niche product, Igor has only made two of them so far, but their hypnotic effect means they're never short of attention. Perfect for a new Russian TV series. The story takes place in the mid-1950s, which means we have to use materials and components appropriate for that time. According to the plot, the main character assembled the monocycle himself from parts he found lying around. To give the monowheel an authentic 50s Soviet feel, the square metal tube used to make the inner frame has been replaced with regular round tube because it simply didn't exist back in the day. It'll also be pimped out with a handle from a classic Ural motorbike, leather seats and a scooter petrol tank. These and all the other modifications will add 12 kilos to the overall weight. So we were keen to see how it'd handle on set. All that extra weight certainly made it more unwieldy, but the stuntman seemed to have just about got the hang of it by the end of the day. The series to be shown on Russia's Channel One is just the latest in a long line of films and TV to feature the modern day Dinosphere. Despite all its drawbacks, just like in John Purves' day, the monowheel is still depicted as the high-speed vehicle of the future. More recently, in a galaxy far, far away, as General Grievous's getaway vehicle in Star Wars Episode 3. Looks like he had trouble with it too. A pair of monocycles were used in the final chase scene in Men in Black 3, but it was all created using a complicated blend of live action, blue screen and digital set pieces so does that mean that practical monocycles only exist in the realms of fiction? Time has a cyclical nature. Time and time again, people return to the things that were created earlier, but using new materials. A monocycle could be considered a fully-fledged form of transport, but with limitations. I mean, would you be able to react in time to a situation on the road when you were traveling at 30 kilometers an hour? Yes. Any faster than that, and I'm not so sure. So it's good for a casual ride, even on public roads. Why not? I think I'll give it a bit more practice before hitting the open road. But that was enough riding mono for me for one day. Luckily, Igor's mono wheels can be attached together to create what's known as a die wheel. So who knows, with its increased stability and passenger capacity, maybe the die wheel is the high-speed vehicle of the future. But that's a topic for another day. That's far from everything we saw in St. Petersburg, but I'm afraid that is all we have time for today. If you want to see more pics and vids from our trip, including outtakes of me and the team riding the monowheel, check out our Facebook page and YouTube channel. So until next time, enjoy the ride.